Welcome to Bark Owls and Nature Bites. Today we're talking about ants and specifically about field ants. We'll get to a video about field uncles down the road. Just kidding. So for field ants, we're talking about those ants. If you ever gone walking around in the woods and you, or a meadow and you see a large ant hill, a large mound of dirt, those are the ants we're talking about. We're not talking about the ones in your house. For field ants, really, they're not going to want to go in your house. They prefer to be outdoors. So really isn't much to worry about those guys coming into your house. And they are going to make large mounds. I would say this one, it'd be kind of hard to see in the camera, but there's one right here. And there might be kind of like eh, two to three feet wide, maybe sometimes up to five feet tall. So they can get pretty large. This one I say is about average. And down below all the tunnels and chambers, well, they can go down almost six feet sometimes. So there's not a lot of ants crawling on this one right now. I try to time it so that way I can be kind of close to it and not get totally swarmed by ants. I'm not going to lie to you, I got a few ants in my pants right now. I already got a couple off of me. Um, but a lot of these ants right now, because it is warm right now, they're down below where it's a little bit cooler. So for field ants, when they make these mounds, that's all the dirt they're excavating for the tunnels below. But also when they make these mounds, they're going to have dead grass. As you can kind of see some of it's brown here. They actually kind of cut them so they keep some all the vegetation off of it. It's one way to make them easy spot. If you see like a patch of dead grass, it's probably a field ant colony right there. Well, they're doing this because all that thatch, that dead grass and all this dirt, kind of helps with the temperature control inside the colony. So it makes it keep it an ideal temperature for them. So for field ants, what do they eat? They're going to eat weak or dead insects. They're also going to eat something that's kind of cool, a honeydew from aphids and leafhoppers. So when I say honeydew from aphids, aphids are another insect and aphids will suck the plant sap out of plants and they'll secrete or spit out of the opposite end of your mouth. I'll let you think about that. They'll secrete honeydew. Well, ants will actually take advantage of that and eat that. To them, it's a nice sugary treat. It's a sugary liquid, kind of like almost maple sap from a tree. So for field ants and a lot of other ants as well, they'll actually almost farm those aphids. So they'll kind of guard those aphids from predators. That way, they have a constant supply of honeydew. So for field ants, there is a queen and sometimes multiple queens in there. They're one of the few um, ant species, one of the few insect species that can tolerate multiple queens in a colony. And for that reason, some of these colonies can last 10 years, 20 years, even longer than that because there will be queens in there constantly laying eggs. So they can tolerate multiple queens, like I said, but sometimes what does happen is a queen will leave, she'll go either start a whole new colony or she might go to a different uh, ant colony, maybe a different species even. She'll get their scent on her and they'll kind of accept her as her, their queen and she'll lay eggs of her offspring. So those workers from a different colony are going to raise the other queen's offspring. Eventually her offspring will outnumber them and she'll have a brand new colony to start. So sometimes they'll do that. Now one thing, do field ants bite? Yeah, they do have little pinchers and they can bite. It doesn't hurt too bad. I can definitely testify that because I uh, got bit a few times right now. But what they also can do is they can also squirt out through the abdomen, their backside, is their um, the formic acid. And the formic acid can be very irritating to the skin. Formic acid is actually also in stinging nettle. It's not quite what gives you that really strong sting, there's some other stuff in stinging nettle, but to kind of give you an idea of what that might feel like, it definitely is very irritating to the skin. And that's all for defense. Now what's interesting is that birds will actually willingly go on top of an ant nest and they'll sit in there and let the ants crawl all over them. Or sometimes they'll take an ant and actually grab them in their beak, crush it, rub it all over their feathers and actually eat it. And they call this anting. Now they're not sure exactly why they do this. The theory is that that formic acid in the ants, by letting those ants crawl over the bird and they crush and rub it on the feathers, that formic acid is actually killing bacteria and fungi and mites, even other insects. So it's kind of like taking a weird ant bath, which I don't think is going to catch on for people at the spas anytime soon. I definitely would not encourage anybody to sit on top of an anthill to do that, but it's something that birds do. So if you ever seen a bird sit on top of an anthill, that's what they're doing. So, Definitely as you're walking around this fall, you're going to probably start noticing a little more as the leaves start dropping off the trees. Look for like dead patches of vegetation. They'll probably clue you in that there's a um, field ant mound right there. If you happen to see one around Halloween and want to go up and say trick or treat, just remember they only have mounds. Thanks for watching Bark Owls Nature Bites.